Hi, my name is Kelly Giffey, and I'm a senior from WFS High School. And I'm Keisha Matz, and I'm a junior at WFS High School. We submitted our lab research project as a team. The title of our research was the Agouti Gene Methylation Comparison Study between C57B1CL and BLBC strains in mice. This research was conducted at WFS High School in Shalis, Washington. Today in the United States, obesity has become a major problem. Nearly two-thirds of the population is overweight. Obesity leads to many health complications as well. An emerging area of research that can be linked back to obesity is epigenetics. Epigenetics is a study of what is happening above the person's DNA. It deals with the change in gene expression rather than the nucleotide sequence because of DNA methylation. This is also referred to as gene silencing. DNA methylation changes the actual structure of the double helix because of the addition of a CH3 methyl group binding to a cytosine base pair. This has the ability to turn genes off because the methyl group, as you can see right here, has the ability to interfere with the transcription process, preventing the production of the protein. When an area of the DNA has a rich concentration of cytosines, it is referred to as a CPG island. Due to the high number of cytosines, methylation is more, most likely to occur in these areas that are usually at the beginning of the transcription site. DNA methylation can be caused by environmental factors, lifestyle choices, and recent research has shown it might even be inherited through genetics. Extreme, case, uh, extreme changes of the DNA structure through methylation can even lead to cancer. The Agouti gene is related to obesity and pigmentation in mice. The body weight part of the Agouti gene is referred to as the Agouti-related protein, or AGRP, that plays a role, a leading role in the regulation of body weight. The pigmentation part of the Agouti gene is also called the Agouti signaling peptide, and this affects the pigmentation of fur or skin. The Agouti-related re protein works like this. Before meals, in the lining of the stomach called the fundus, ghrelin, which is a hormone, is produced and then is transferred up to the brain where it binds in the AGRP neuron in the hypothalamus. After that binds to the AGRP neuron, it produces the protein AGRP and signals to the body that you are hungry. As food is eaten, a hormone called leptin is secreted from fat tissue. Leptin is then sent to the brain where it binds to the AGRP neuron um, in the hypothalamus, signals for the agouti-related protein to be, uh, production of that to be halted, and signals to the body that you are full. The, the agouti signaling peptide is produced when it attaches to the melacortin-1 receptor. The peptide binding to the receptor signals for yellow pigmentation in mice. This occurs when the gene is expressed. The picture below represents an agouti signaling peptide. One study conducted by Stanford University shows that the agouti gene is in control of the black and yellow pigment distribution in fur. Another study shows that yellow mice have the yellow obese syndrome that is believed to be linked to the agouti gene. This gene has been found to be highly expressed in the hypothalamus and adipose tissue. Mice were used because they contain similar organs and physiology to Homo sapiens that can be used for research. It is necessary to use skin samples from mice because tissue was needed for the extraction of genomic DNA to be used in real-time PCR. The agouti gene is expressed in the adipose cells in the skin, so the methylation of it could be analyzed. The purpose of this study was to determine whether DNA methylation of the agouti gene plays a role in the pigmentation and body weight of the yellow and brown mice skin tissue samples. It was hypothesized that the mice with a brown coat would have agouti gene methylation because the ACIP causes the pigmentation to turn yellow, so this gene must be turned off. Since DNA methylation can silence genes, the brown mice should show increased methylation patterns. In this experiment, the manipulated variable was skin color. Yellow skin from BLABC strain of mice and brown skin from C57B1 
slash 6L were compared. To analyze the methylation patterns, the melt curves were used from the high resolution melt software. To produce a melt curve, previously amplified DNA is put through a process of a heating cycle. When the DNA reaches its melting point, it releases the dye that bound to the DNA in the PCR reaction. Unmethylated and methylated samples have different melting points, which result in different melt curves. All research procedures were conducted in the same environment at the same time. To begin this study, yellow and brown mice skin tissue samples were purchased from the Jackson Laboratories. Once the, t the tissue samples had been received, the genomic DNA was extracted from the tissue with the use of the DNEZ blood and tissue kit from Kyogen. After this procedure, the DNA samples were ready to go through the cells to CPG conversion. The cells to CPG bisulfate conversion kit from Applied Biosystems was used. This process converts unmethylated cytosines to uracils, and methylated cytosines will not be changed. After the conversion, the DNA was ready for amplification and analysis through real-time PCR. Right after the PCR reaction, the samples go through a melt curve cycle as the thermal cycle gradually increases in temperature and records the melting points of the DNA. Unmethylated samples have lower melting points due to the uracil content. Uracils melt at a lower point than cytosines, so it releases the dye sooner, resulting in different melting curves. At this time, the DNA has been extracted from the tissue. It has also been converted f with the use of the cells to CPG kit. Concentrations of the samples have been taken with the use of the nanodrop. Um, we are still in the process of calibrating the real-time PCR machine for the high-resolution melt software. And we are still trying to run the samples through real-time PCR and the high-resolution melt software to analyze the methylation patterns. We anticipate on having uh, results later this week and we'll come prepared for BioExpo with the appropriate conclusions.